Hello and welcome back to the Clark Blue Podcast. I'm your host for this one, Dan Rodinson, and I'm joined by Kev Harper from the Luton Town Supporters Trust Podcast to talk Ross Barkley. Now, this video will come out when the Ross Barkley deal has been announced and confirmed by Aston Villa. Uh, we all know that it is happening, but as of recording this episode, it's not all kind of signed and dotted. Villa haven't tweeted that it's been done yet, but it, it is going to happen. Uh, first of all, mate, how are you? Everything okay? Yeah, all good, mate. Yep, recovered from uh, England pouring the place out and uh, looking forward to the counting down for the football season to start yeah how was your um your premier league stay by the way just the one year back in the championship now but did it sounds so condescending but i was gonna say did you enjoy it as if it was like a one-off thing but yeah how was the, the experience for you yeah absolutely enjoyed it yeah i mean to enjoy the premier league bit you have to understand the journey and to go from non-league to the premier league in 10 years we couldn't even have dreamt of last season happening 10 years ago yeah. so uh yeah we enjoyed it but it's given us a, the bug and we want to get back there. So hopefully we can do that this season. All right, let's talk Ross Barker then. An element of the of the supporter fan base, of the supporters at Aston Villa when the, the deal was first mooted, I don't know, a month ago or more now, it feels like it's been a long time coming this one. Almost a bit of a PTSD of like, or oh, when we had him before, it didn't really work out. Performances and injuries where you just thought, I'm not quite sure this guy's got it anymore. Goes to Luton Town in the season, just gone playing number six rather than a number ten, and much a, a very different role to what Villa fans saw the first time round. That very different from the player that kind of burst onto the scene at Everton all those years ago. It's a different Ross Barker that, that Aston Villa are getting this time round, and it's a different Aston Villa as well that that Ross Barker is coming into. First of all, just kind of sum up what player he was for you last season, how good he was. Oh, he was absolutely magnificent. Um, he controlled matches in the centre of the park. He was the guy that. When we were in trouble with the ball, we'd get it to him to take us or mm. take it away from danger, to pick a pass, to get us on the attack, to do everything that we know that Ross Barkley can do really from from even before Aston Villa had him the first time round. You know, we just got that that best out of him. And the longer the season went on, you could tell he was enjoying his football more and more, even though results weren't necessarily going the right way. Mm. He was able to showcase his stuff and um we just gave him a platform really where we allowed him to perform and in turn he made us perform and it was a perfect yeah. match really. It's interesting isn't it when you see players who are known for playing further forward drop back to a more defensive role you know you, know, you normally see it from midfielders who are who are getting on a little bit and the last stages of their career will be kind of dictating the play and sitting on the ball and that kind of thing and there's always an element of them that still has that and still possesses those qualities of a player that has played further forward that they can ping a ball around and, and look comfortable on, in possession more so than maybe a, a traditional number six whose job is to sit there and screen and, and stop play and just break things up they can, they can play as well and they can progress forward a little bit is that something that you saw from Barker? It, it wasn't a number six in the sense of just stopping the play like Marvin Sinakamba, who is another player that Villa fans will be familiar with that you just think of as he will stop the play and then pass it on to somebody else and kind of hold his hands up and say, right, done my bit. Ross Barker can get on the ball and, and bring things forward as well. Yeah, exactly that. When he, when he gets on the ball, he'll, he'll either look for a pass that progresses us up the pitch or he'll carry it himself. That's obviously mm. the latter part is what Nakamba can't do. You know, he can, yeah. he can play the pass to give it to someone who's more suited to attacking than what he is. But Barkley's able to drive forward. He's able to pay, play long passes. And he worries defenders. You know, when he's got the yeah. ball, they don't know whether to go to him. They don't know whether to mark the runners. And, and if you get him sort of driving at the defence, he's, he's in brilliant form. And of course, he's got a goal in him as, as well, hasn't he? So... Uh, yeah, no, I, th- I think Villa are getting a much better player than they got the first time round. Just to shoot, just on the basis, really, that he's probably gone through a fair bit in his career since then, hasn't he? The Chelsea move didn't really work out. The Nice one didn't. Mm. And now he seems to have his love for football back again. What, what do you think the cause that? Because obviously, you know, it's, you consider obviously still in the Premier League, but dropping down a level to what he would have been used to with, with Villa and Chelsea. And obviously, the Nice move is slightly different, but um, a team that was always tipped to, to be relegated and obviously eventually was. Did that help him maybe as kind of having that attitude of almost being like the bigger fish in the smaller pond? Or did he buy into everything that, that Luton Town had to offer and kind of became one of the lads, if you like? He definitely brought into everything that um, we had to offer. But at the same time, you know, everyone knew that. Um, he was the big fish in the small pond. I mean, there was a story sort of not long after he signed. Uh, Tom Lockyer was in the media and Ross Barkley introduced himself the first day of training. And Lockyer was like, mate, you don't need to introduce yourself. We've all been watching you play football for however long. And I don't know if that kind of settled it down or things, but it kind of just shows just how much of a big fish he was in, in the small pond that they all knew who Ross Barkley was. I mean, obviously England International and everything else. Mm. Uh, maybe that helped him settle in. 
But what I really liked about him is, is he took responsibility. He took responsibility on the ball. He took responsibility off the ball. That's probably the one thing that maybe Villa fans wouldn't have appreciated the first time round. Now he got a bit more sort of tactical nous about him. He knows positionally how to play that deeper role. But mm. when he's on the ball, he'll take risks. And we are we was absolutely fine with him taking risks because we knew the reward if it came off. If it didn't come off, well, if we didn't have Ross Barkley, we weren't exactly going to be going anywhere anyway. So we kind of allowed him to play with that freedom that if you make a mistake, OK, go and get it back. But it's absolutely fine. Um, yeah. But he didn't make too many, to be honest. And so many midfields, he made to look silly, even playing for Luton. Yeah, I'm, I'm really intrigued by this one. I, I had that initial kind of gut reaction that I think a few had of like, well, that's not kind of the first. Uh, he was the first transfer link, obviously, we've signed players before him, but he was kind of like, we've just qualified for the Champions League. He's not like the big, flashy, sexy signing that we maybe thought may happen. You know, five million Ross Barkley from Luton Town, who've just been relegated, doesn't exactly scream like, oh, we're kind of ready to step up a level. But he's a player that Una Emery really rates. I think from a financial point of view, it's a, it's a really good deal. I suspect he's on less wages now than he was the first time around as well. The, the way that the position is different, he will get minutes. I would guarantee probably pretty much straight away. Obviously, Bubakar Kamara is injured from, from the start of the season and will be injured for the first three or four months probably. Just as we were recording this, sold Douglas Louise as well. So this isn't saying that Ross Barkley is a Douglas Louise replacement, but there's some space there in that midfield with Yuri Tielemans, Enzo Baranchia has just signed as well. McGinn can play further back if, if needs be, but he's better playing further forward. So there is a, a Ross Barkley sized hole in that in that squad almost ready to go straight away that he will come in, get minutes playing as a defensive midfielder as he was for, for Luton last season. And with no disrespect to Luton, be surrounded by better better players as well. And hopefully under Unai Emery, yes, he had a good season last year, but we hope that that wasn't kind of the best of his abilities, the, the kind of the peak of his career now. And it's a, oh, a player on the decline. Hopefully he gets minutes at Villa, with, like I say, around better players with no disrespect to um, to Rob Edwards either, but with a better coach. And Ross Barker can take a step up again to <laughs> those listed. Kev just kind of uh, shrugged his shoulders there as if to say that he's not sure that Unai is a better coach. Um, but hopefully Ross Barker can kind of come into Villa and, and he's not going to be the big fish in the small pond any, any, any longer. He's going to be, a, a, you know, not a bit part player. That's not disrespectful the other way, but... He's not like the main man anymore and I'm hopeful as Villa fans will be that he can kind of slot into that and go from from the season straight away because we're going to need him from, from the off, I think. Well, the one thing you're going to get is a confident footballer. We've restored his confidence. Mm. You know, we've, we've, we've he came here kind of looking for a, a way to sort of get his career back on track, really. Um, no one really, I mean, we had the same sort of reservations when he arrived of what Villa fans might be having now. Obviously, you've you've had it before, so your yeah. your sort of um, reservations come from from that. But we had the same one. Oh, he's injury prone. That 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 was generally the the line that was thrown out. Really, oh, he's injury prone. He doesn't play enough games. Well, actually, when you speak to him, and we're lucky enough that on our podcast we get invited down to the club to interview players each month, and and so we've had a chat with Ross. He's adamant that with a run of games, there's nothing wrong with his body. But at mm. Chelsea and at Nice, he couldn't get that run of games. He played one, missed three. So yeah. if you give him a run of games, you keep his confidence high. I mean, this is a guy who's got world-class quality on the ball. World-class quality on the ball. I mean, I personally think he should be out in Germany with the England squad right now. I think he's had that good a season. Like you said, he's going to be playing with much better players. He's going to be playing with Ollie Watkins, who's obviously going to make a move whenever he gets the ball, those two will link up very, very well. I'm confident of that because he linked up so well with Adebayo here. But also when we had like Lukonga alongside him, when we had Townsend playing, you could just tell that those kind of players think on a different level to the rest of the Luton players, no disrespect to them. And obviously he's got all of those kind of players at Villa. So I just think, I think he's going to fit in well. I think it's a perfect move. The fact that Douglas Louise has gone, like you say, he's not an exact replacement, but that position seems to be open. And when Kamara's alongside him and allows Barkley a little bit of freedom to go forward and not necessarily have to think about what happens if he loses the ball, then uh, that's when you're going to get him at his best. That's what we managed to do. We put Lukonga alongside him. He basically said, go up there and do your thing and I'll mm. mop up if you if you lose it sort of thing. And um, and that freedom, he just he relished it. Yeah, it's nice to hear that kind of injuries aren't 
kind of a big deal for him psychologically as well that he doesn't feel that that's a, a problem for him and the confidence has been restored and you know, he had a very obviously Luton relegate but had a very successful season last year and will kind of add this revitalised energy that almost a player that was very very good for Everton gets his big big move for Chelsea that doesn't work and he kind of career feels like it's on a, on a decline to have this spark now that has earned him a move kind of back up the football food chain to Aston Villa who are a Champions League club now that must fill in with confidence as well that kind of someone's taken a chance on me almost to, to kickstart my career again. I've heard stories that he mentored our academy players, you know, he, mm. he helped he helped bring them through, which at Luton senior players have to do that. I mean, we haven't got the money to go out and spend, you know, X, Y and Z. So we have to bring our academy players through where possible. So we look at our senior players to kind of help with that. So him and Andros Townsend were two, two big things with that. I, I, I didn't hear anyone say a bad word about Ross Barkley, I spoke to him on two or three occasions. As I say, at the training ground, we um, spoke to him, and also the trust run certain player events, the end of season awards, and things like that. We basically cleaned up on last season, and um, he's just he just comes across as a top guy. I think the experiences that he's had in the past at Chelsea and and at Nice have kind of rounded him a little bit more. Plus, he's thirty years old now, so you know he's a different different time in his life sort of thing but the one thing I did always kind of get from him is he's determined to prove a point he doesn't like the the way that his career went at Chelsea and people have written him off I think he I think he still wants to write his legacy so to speak and uh, Mm -hmm. I saw a determination I mean everything that he did here he was determined to keep Luton in the Premier League and kind of took it on his shoulders to do that realistically we just ran out of bodies but it was it was definitely not down to Barkley and the main thing was he played once he got into that so into the side it took him kind of a month after he signed just to get up to full fitness but that's natural he didn't have a pre-season and everything yeah. else but once he was in that side he never came out of it so uh, you know there's nothing wrong with his body there's certainly nothing wrong with his ability I think Villa are getting a great player for five million and all Luton fans wish him wish him well, and we look forward to watching him in the Champions League doing his thing. Yeah, that all sounds sounds really positive, and will be some comfort to, to Villa fans, I'm sure. Just finally, then on on his position, as I said at the top of the show, like it's a very different role that Barkley is now doing for Luton than he was when uh, Villa last had him, and obviously the the number ten that jumped onto the scene for for Everton and Chelsea and uh, and whatnot as well is not the player that, that he is now in terms of position anyway. As you say, like on the ball ability and stuff, is things that you don't lose, and that is a kind of a unique thing for a player deeper to have that technical ability. I read some quotes or a story when I was on holiday, so forgive me for not having the full details or the sources or anything, but it, it was about that Barkley had played that deeper position, kind of coming coming into football uh, as a youngster or whatever, and, and suffered an injury, and that kind of altered the way he felt about the position or kind of being a little bit maybe concerned to fly into tackles and things like that, in worry of, of, of getting a, a bad injury or whatever. So it was moved further forward and technical ability allowed him to, to to play that role just fine and, and obviously that's what we all know him for but something that people don't know is that he, he came through playing that that position he played deeper he was a player that was um, kind of defensively minded but wasn't almost quite ready for it whereas now as you say a different stage in his life a different stage in his career he he has that defensive mindset now he has that that ability and that, that tactical understanding that this isn't a number 10 playing out a position for Luton because he just had to do a job there he is now a defensive midfielder. He is now a number six, whatever you want to call it. That's what Ross Barkley is in 2024. Yeah, exactly that. He just wants to be on the ball, really. And I think in modern football, you're on the ball most as a number six, aren't you? The best thing about him, he'll take the ball under pressure. And in the Premier League, you're under pressure an awful lot in that position. He's comfortable mm. taking it under pressure. I mean, if you look at England recently, they're trying desperately to find a midfielder who will take the ball under pressure. He can do that. It's, it, it, you know, it's second nature to him. He can go past the player. He, he's got all of it. The only thing in that position that Luton fans kind of questioned was whether he had the defensive instinct to be there. But there was a couple of times where last gasp clearances came via him to save goals and things like that. He just reads the play so well. He's just a, an incredibly intelligent footballer. And uh, I think this number six position allows him to bring the best of that side of him, you know, his footballing brain out. And we all know Mm. the skills he's got and the class he's got with the ball. And the further forward Villa will be, and unlike at Luton, he's going to be further forward naturally for Villa because, you know, we were pushed back a lot last season. Yeah, Villa are obviously going to be playing against teams that, you know, defend deep and sort of two banks of four and all of that, particularly against the lower sides. 
and that's when he'll come into his own as well, you know. So, uh, yeah, Villa have got themselves a really, really, really good player for a really good price. Actually, the price suits Luton as well. So it's it's a great deal for everyone. And um, we wish him the very, very best and look forward to watching him in the Premier League if we can't watch Luton in the Premier League. Lovely stuff, Kevin. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. I really appreciate your your insight into Ross Barkley, the man, the player in uh, 2024. As I say, for Villa fans, this is a, a different experience for us and yeah, really intrigued to see how he gets on for Villa under an iron roof. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you on the next one.